So this is going to be a crash course in how to read an echo, particularly focused uh, for emergency medicines. We'll cover kind of the most important uh, aspects. Uh, first, we'll discuss a little bit the view. Very important to understand what we're looking at to recognize what looks normal. And then we'll talk about some pathology, effusions, valve problems, pulmonary embolism, ejection fraction, and others. No disclosures. The first thing is to note the view. Um, the ultrasound kind of takes a slice. And so this is the direction we're taking a slice. You put it at the fourth intercostal space um, directed towards the right shoulder. And the ultrasound is going to take a piece of the heart to take a nice cut halfway. And this is exactly what it will look like. Here, the aorta. Over here in the bottom right is your atrium. Your left atrium goes past these two valves. These are the mitral valves to the left ventricle. Then out of these two valves, these are the aortic valves, out of the aorta. So again, we have the left atrium past these mitral valves into this area over here. This is the left ventricle, past the aortic valves, and then the blood pumps out this way. Up here, you can see a little bit of the right ventricle. So very important to understand that this is the view. And then when we're looking at an echo, it shows up like this, and this is exactly the same thing. Here's the left atrium. You could see it over here. These are the mitral valves we just talked about. Left atrium, mitral valves. This is the left ventricle. And then it passes out here, and the aorta would be right around here. So left atrium, valves, left ventricle, aorta, and this is the right ventricle. Here's an example of it in motion, and hopefully this makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. But here's the left atrium again. These are the mitral valves, and blood is flowing into the left ventricle over here, and it's popping out. And here you can see the cusps of the aortic valves. The top here is a little bit of the uh, right ventricle. Now something to take note about this heart um, is how nice and dynamic it is. It's kind of uh, bouncing back and forth. It's squeezing like a towel, the cardiologist once described to me. And so this would be an example of a nice heart. Um, here again is an example of, of, a, of the heart and what we're looking at over here. This is the left atrium. These are the mitral valves that goes into the left ventricle and out of the aortic valve over here. Here is an example of something that's not good. If you take a look under the heart, you'll see some black, black that's fluid. So this is some fluid under the heart. Let me back it up one slide just to take note. Under the heart over here, there should be no fluid. Over here, we see fluid. This is a pericardial effusion. This is something that if you see, you don't need to wait um, for an x-ray, for a CT scan. You can grab an ultrasound machine and see this in a moment. So here's an example of what good valves look like. Take a look at these mitral valves and the aortic valves. These guys look like nice windshield wipers. They open, they close, very beautiful. Then here is a problem with the valves. Here's the left atrium. It goes. These are the mitral valves that are barely moving. This is the left ventricle. The aortic valves look very sclerotic. They're barely moving. Again, these are not the nice valves we just saw a moment ago. When you're looking at the echo, also take a look at the right ventricle. So we start over here. This is the left atrium to the left ventricle out here, the aortic valves. And then up here is the right ventricle. And the right ventricle should be smaller than the left ventricle. If you come across something like this, and this is going to take a second to orient, this is the left ventricle mitral valves. Over here is the left, ven the, excuse me, left atrium mitral valves. The left ventricle pops out here through the aortic valves. And this entire thing over here is the right ventricle. And the reason it's so big, this is, of course, a pulmonary embolism. So if you suspect a pulmonary embolism, this is something that you can uh, take a look for very quickly and you can diagnose. Uh, you don't really need to wait for all these uh, fancy tests. You can get a good idea what's going on within 30 seconds. Highly recommend uh, using this uh, in the emergency room. Uh, another thing to take note of the left ventricle size here. Nice, look at this muscle wall, it's very good. Um, the left atrium, the mitral valves, left ventricle. Compared to this, this is a balloon. And this is the left atrium going into the left ventricle. And the left ventricle over here, it looks like a big balloon over here. This is a dilated heart. This is uh, some kind of cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, and this is not something that you'd like to see. Again, uh, if you look under here, there's no black, so there's no effusion. Um, the valve, this one's not moving well. Um, the aortic valves are not really well seen. Now, one of the final things we'll talk about is the ejection fraction. This is, honestly, it takes a really long amount of time to get a good uh, grasp to estimate the ejection fraction, and even then, uh, there's no guarantees. But essentially, we're looking over here at the left ventricle, right? Left atrium, mitral valves goes here into the left ventricle. Aortic valves appears to the right ventricle. 
So essentially you're looking at the left ventricle and you're looking by how much space is there before the contraction and after. So take a look at the amount of black from the top to the bottom before the contraction and after the contraction. And so over here it looks like during each contraction around half of it goes away. So I'd say the EF over here is around 50, maybe even 60. So this is a good EF. Let's take a look over here at this one. Uh, here, left atrium, these are bad valves. You can actually see, looks like maybe an effusion here. Um, but the if you look over here at the black, the amount of fluid that's in the ventricle before and after contraction, there's almost no difference. This EF, I think, would be generous to say 20, 25 even at best. Um, so in conclusion, ECHO is a very fast and useful tool. Hopefully, we, you gained a, a very basic understanding of what the normal is and how to recognize certain pathologies, pericardial effusion, pulmonary embolism, valvular abnormalities, um, and other problems. And, and, you know, if there's anything to really take from this, uh, I hope that it's, uh, you recognize that an ultrasound takes 30 seconds, 45 seconds to do uh, and can give you a ton of information. Uh, thanks for checking this out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask um, and I will get back to you.